Hey, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Christina Kent and I'm a full-time fine artist based in San Francisco. Today, I wanted to dive a little bit into color theory. Colors are so, so fascinating. And I think that there's just like endless nuance when it comes to exploring colors and how they work together. And one of the coolest things about colors is how they're relative. If you've been doing art for a while, or even if you're new, or if you've just seen a lot of cool optical illusions, you've probably noticed the relativity of color. We perceive colors differently based on the colors they're placed next to. And this is something that is so fun to explore when it comes to painting. I still remember painting one of my first still lifes of a lemon and I was looking at the lemon and I saw its shadow and I thought that the shadow was yellow. My brain was telling me, oh, it's a lemon. Lemon is yellow. The shadow is yellow. But when I actually went to paint it, I realized that the shadow was actually green. And the reason that I thought it was yellow was because it was next to a blue that was much less yellow than the yellow tones in the green. And this effect is particularly strong if you look at grays. I feel like grays are like the chameleons of the color world. Like you can take a gray and you can put it next to a field of green and it'll suddenly look purple. Then you can take that same gray and you can put it in a field of purple and it'll look green. Now, all of this is illustrated more in Joseph Albers' Interaction of Color, which is a book that I have, they, they have a lot of exercises and I haven't done all the exercises, but I have gone through and looked through all of the color examples and it is really fun to just like take a look if you haven't. But recently I was inspired by another artist to do a color exercise myself. And here's the premise of the exercise. Take a painting that you've done and take the colors of that painting and then put those colors in a new context and see what happens. The cool thing with this idea is that by using the same colors, but just changing sort of the context or the background that the colors are on, you can actually start to see the colors behaving in a new and different way. And as a quick note, this video isn't sponsored by anyone, but if you want to support my work, you can buy my paintings from my website. You can like, comment, subscribe to this channel, or you can support me on Patreon. All of these things really help. So for this exercise, I'm going to be working from this recent painting I did of the streets of San Francisco. And here are my color mixtures that I'm going to be using. So um, these are kind of like average colors from the painting. The actual painting has a lot more nuance to it. Um, but these are just kind of like, yeah, think of them as like the average color groups. And I have about seven different color mixtures here. Now I'm going to take each color mixture and in order lay it down onto the surface that I've prepared. So here, um, since this is just an exercise, I'm working on some Arches oil paper and I've just divided it into four sections. So I have a white section, a gray section, a black section, and then kind of like a warm reddish brown section. And the idea here is just to see how each color behaves in these different contexts. So I'm taking the same color here. I'm starting with my darkest color. Um, I usually paint from dark to light and I'm gonna be layering the colors just a little bit. So I'm starting with the dark colors to make the, the layering a bit easier. Um, but you, as you can see, I'm starting with this very, very dark, um, almost a black color. And I'm just laying it down on each of these surfaces. Then next I go and start layering my slightly, I guess my next darkest color, which is a very dark green. And as I'm putting these colors down, I'm really trying to notice what is happening on the surface. How does the color appear? How does the background appear? Um, how does it, does, does the background sort of change in appearance as I'm putting these new colors down? Um, does it seem to be the same? I'm also trying to compare across the different panels. So does something different seem to happen on the panel with the white background compared to the panel with the black background? These are all questions that I'm, I'm just trying to pay attention to what's happening as I'm adding each new color. And I feel like with the dark colors, I didn't notice too much going on right away. But as I started adding like this lighter green, I'm starting to see some interesting things happening. For example, on the white background panel, that green actually, it looks kind of dull and it looks, yeah, just not very saturated in my eyes on the white panel um, compared to say, against the black, the green is actually looking very bright. And against the red and against the gray, the green is, it takes on almost this energy to it that it doesn't seem to have in the white and black panels. And this, this is something that I've noticed in my experience too. If you put um, really saturated colors against white, white is just so bright that it seems like it dulls down 
most colors. So, and this is a reason why you'll notice a lot of painters, they'll use a palette that's not white, but instead is like a brown or a gray, because it, it can be so hard to assess colors against a bright white background. And then when we look at the green against the red, um, we're, we're noticing how these, when you put contrasting colors next to each other, you can get these really interesting effects. Similarly, as I'm putting down the orange, I notice that it's it's kind of looking a bit dull against the white background. It's definitely looking much brighter against the black background, but it's um, it's not popping out so much. But I feel like once I put it on the gray background, then I'm really starting to feel this bright orange that it almost seems to like vibrate against that gray background. And I would say, like I've, I've sped up this video a little bit, but if you're doing this exercise, definitely take your time because there's just a lot of very subtle changes. And if you go really quickly, it can be hard to notice what's going on. But if you go slowly and sort of evaluate after each time you put down the brush stroke, you'll, you'll start to see some really subtle changes that are happening with the colors as you're putting them on different colored surfaces. Things that I'm really paying attention to are is the color looking brighter or is it looking duller? Is it looking more saturated or is it looking less saturated? Is it looking a little bit warmer that is like a little bit more towards orange or is it looking a little cooler that is a little bit more towards blue? And as I did this exercise, I'm mostly testing how the colors look against this different background. So I'm keeping them in the same order across all the different surfaces. But you could also use the same background, but then just change the ordering that you put the colors in and see if that makes a difference. It's a really simple exercise, but I think it's a great way to start training your eye to see the different relationships that colors can have and how they change when they're in different environments. One thing that was really apparent to me was just how dull the colors looked against the white background versus how, how much they really seemed to come alive against the gray and the red backgrounds. I also really liked how the warmer tones in the peach and the green color seem to really shine in the, when they're compared to the gray background as opposed to when they are compared to the warmer red background. And I found in all of these settings, the colors look really different from how they looked in the original painting. So anyway, that's all I have for today, um, but I hope that you found this demonstration to be really helpful. And honestly, the camera can't capture all of the interesting color interactions that are going on here. So I hope that you can get one of your own paintings and then give this a try in your studio. And if you want to explore these ideas even deeper, I would highly recommend getting Joseph Albers Interaction of Color book. They have lots of examples of things like this and tons of different exercises that you can try. As always, would love to hear your comments or any questions that you have in the comments below. And as always, a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Y'all are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and making these videos happen. If you like my art, if you like my videos, and you want to help me make more, check out my Patreon at the link. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.